Welcome back, Shalliners. Oh yeah, it's still Evil Week. And today, we're going to talk about a deadly sin, as we've been talking about deadly sins all week. One that we are very, very familiar with in this age of Instagram and flaunting things and comparison. That's right, envy. And not just envy. We're going to talk about mean girls, haters, how to differentiate the two, and how to shut each category down. But first, just want to remind you that if you have a one-on-one -on -one question for me, want a little private chit-chat about your own evil empire and nefarious plans, follow me on uh, my website, shallonlester.com, and click get help to connect with me. Also, head over there to shop my new merch line, which I love and is also kind of has like an evil, wicked feel to it. Also, follow me on Instagram at shallonxo, where I let you vote for the next video topic, and be sure to listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday. So, before we talk about envy, we have to differentiate it from jealousy because there is a really big difference and there's a reason why envy is a deadly sin and jealousy isn't. First of all, jealousy is an adjective, right? I feel jealous. Envy is a verb. I am envy. I envy her. I am envious. Like, it can also be used adj adjectivishly, but it is... It's a verb, it's also a noun. So here's the difference. We, there's, we got some definitions. Jealousy is being fiercely protective over your rights, position, or possession. Like you guard something jealously. You know, you're jealous when someone flirts with your man, right? Envy is the longing aroused by someone else's possession, qualities, good luck, or achievements. So basically, it's not only do I, am I like, you know, feeling a type of way, I want what they have and I don't think that they should have it. Jealousy is characterized by fear, anger, resentment, and insecurity. Envy is characterized by resentment and longing. Again, it's a sense, why did they have it and why do I not have it? Again, that's why it's a deadly sin. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. You feel jealous when you are when you are afraid of losing something that you already possess. That's interesting. But you feel envy for something you don't have. Oh, that's interesting. So, before we talk about how to shut down haters, we have to define <laughs> we defined envy, but we also have to define whether or not we actually are dealing with a hater. Sometimes we think we're dealing with a hater and we are actually dealing with someone who simply does not like us. And that is an unfortunate case. And it's very easy when someone gives you feedback that is negative, when they come at you a certain type of way, to be like, you're just jealous, right? That's what our moms told us, that's what our sisters told us. Don't pay them any mind. They're probably just jealous of you. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, like, hello, that makes so much sense. But it's not always the healthiest standpoint to take because that means you are absolving yourself of any sort of wrongdoing. And a lot of times we look at some, we all have that friend who's like messy online. And you're just like, ugh, I really hope I'm not that friend. But I'm sure I have been and I probably will be later this week. Where it's like you, you try to give them feedback. You know, it's like you need to not like post things that you're posting. You need to not like clap back at people and start fights. And what do they say? You know what? You're just jealous. And I get questions from you guys saying, I can't make friends. Girls are always jealous of me. I'm like, well, that's probably not true. Even Giselle has friends. Do you know what I'm saying? Like even the hottest, most enviable women among us, they've got friends too. Like if you're chronically encountering jealous females, you're probably actually encountering a good percentage of those people who are trying to give like feedback in some way, or they just don't like you. And I'm not saying that what they don't like about you is valid. It might be completely invalid. If people have opinions, who gives a shit? But like I said, if this keeps coming up, if you keep getting the same type of feedback, the same type of reactions, there might not be a hater situation. It might just be an enemy. And we're gonna talk about enemies tomorrow when we cover our very last sin, wrath. My favorite sin, because I, I'm good at it. So what is a hater, okay? This is when you know you have a hater. If you can complete the sentence, they are envious of me, not just jealous, they are envious of me because I have blank and they don't. If you can't think of what that blank is, it's not a hater, it's not a hater, right? 
And in this day and age, you know, of social media and everything, that blank is very, it changes. Like back in the day, it's like, they're jealous because I have this fur coat, because I have a husband named Tom and he's an ad executive on Madison Avenue. You know, I have a Chrysler LeBaron, but now it's like, they're jealous of me because I have clout, because I have followers, because I have power, because I have opinions and that people are listening to. I am perhaps speaking about myself. Like I get a lot of hate. I get a lot more love. I get a lot more love from you guys. Look, my evil black little heart. That's me. But with, you know, with every high, there's a low, you know, and I have certainly my fair share of people who purely and simply don't like me. They don't agree with what I'm saying, but there's a lot of people who are like very jealous. So how do we know? How do we know? Well, I consulted a psychologist, right? Okay. So this is an article by a doctor named Susan Albers, 10 tips for mindfully coping with judgment and haters. Some of these I agree with, some she literally could not be more wrong in so far that we're talking about evil, evil week. So here's something, judgments are telling. And this is really true. Like most often the things, and Oprah said this, the things we hate in others are the things we hate in ourselves. <sighs> that, when I heard that, I felt so like <laughs> attacked. Like think about sectors of the population where you are very intolerant and we all have them. Let's not lie to ourselves because when you don't, what? You can't change what you don't acknowledge. I have historically, until I like worked on my eating issues and my self-worth issues, I was very judgmental of fat people because I feel fat. Like, you can call me ugly, I know I'm not ugly. You can call me stupid, I know I'm not stupid. But if you call me fat, fuck, man. That, like, that's not what I wanna hear because that's what I have told myself. So I had, at first, like, issues with the body positivity movement because I'm like, why do you weigh twice what I do and you get to feel good about yourself and I don't feel good about me? But it took me a minute and some pause to be like, that's what's going on. And that person feeling good about themselves does not take anything away from me. There's a seat at the table for everyone to feel good about themselves, okay? But like on the flip side, like I don't have any problem with people being gay or bisexual or transgender because it's like, well, I don't care. You know, that's, that's fine, great. I feel fine about my sexuality. I feel fine about my gender identity. Like do, do you or her or him, whatever, I don't care. So if you feel like there's this, this like tick, you know, this tick of intolerance in you, look at that more closely and then see how that might relate to something you're going through. But like, why? This is evil week. We're not talking about our own flaws, aha. But one of the rules of war, and again, we'll talk about this more tomorrow during wrath, is that to be successful in battle, you can't just know your army's stats and, and their inventory. You gotta know your own. Nobody marches into battle being like, I don't know, how many tanks do we got? I don't, are there war elephants? Oh, there's not, oh. I didn't know that. Do we have snipers? We do. How many? Like, you know, you know what you're going into. So when you face an adversary, you not only have to know about them, you have to know about yourself more. Because if you don't know about yourself, they've got power over you. They can manipulate you because they're going to tap into things that you're not aware of. So when someone on the internet says, you're fat, I'm like, okay, I know that I'm not. I am a... I, Girl, I can catch a dick whenever I want. I'll catch your mans if you're not careful. Keep talking. So like I've dealt with those issues and now when someone says it and I'm like, uh, uh, like I know, you know what? Them saying that is more about them than it is about me. Judgments are telling. And how do we relate this to evil week, right? Because if this was regular week, I would say just stop it. You know, don't let it get you. No, fuck that, it's evil week. You turn that shit around and you go back on them hard hard oh i'm fat because i googled you and i can see your cellulite from fucking space kelsey your arms are so fat they're wider than your head in all your photos did you do that on purpose <laughs> if you're gonna do it do it if your wrath be mighty and dark as night fall like a thunderbolt sun Tzu, pouring out for my man oh there's my drink yay it blended in with the pumpkins Mm-hmm, metal star. I don't want shit my beautiful teeth. So use their own insecurities against them, right? Whatever someone says about you is the thing that they feel and hate about themselves. And that's data, that's data for you. 
Okay. Like I said, her second point, start with yourself. When you hear an insult that really like gets to you, whether it's your fat, whether it's your stupid, whether it's not, you're not worthy, whether it's you're a nobody, take a moment and be like, okay, is their insult rational? Like, is this true? Am I really fat? No. Am I really a nobody? No, I'm not. So don't believe your inner critic if something pings for you, right? These are the points you make. Remember, a thought is not a fact. A thought is not a fact. Also, a T-H-O-T thought is also not a fact. Just because she looks hot doesn't mean she actually is in real life. All right. Yeah, so understand the pain. If a comment or judgment like hits a nerve, like figure out why, because sometimes people will say things to me on the internet that are like unbelievably horrible and I'm just like, whatever. And then they'll say something that's kind of innocuous that I'm like, I will fucking come to your house. I will come to your house and I will take your dog and that is my dog now. Like, it, and I'll think about it for like days. I'm not gonna tell you what those things are because I don't want you to keep saying them. But it's not necessarily what you think. Okay, this is where her, um, this is where her advice divides with mine. She says, call them out. It's not okay to be a bully. Your statements are hurtful. Can we talk about it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you know what mean girls are? They are bullies. And you know what bullies respond to? Strength, not weakness. If you go to someone who's being mean to you and who's, or who's being a hater, and you're like, hey, can we just like talk this out? Let's squash the beef. You know what they're gonna see? A green fucking light to keep going for you. They are going to interpret that as weakness. Weakness, and then you got a target on your back and it's real hard to get it off. You are better off doing nothing, saying nothing, non-response, than coming to them from a place of like, hey, I just wanna talk this out. No, because someone, someone has brought war to your doorstep. And again, we'll talk about this more in Wrath. But when someone attacks you, your response needs to be so overwhelming they're afraid to ever attack you again. And again, in the Wrath video, we'll address this. That doesn't necessarily mean it should be right then. War is strategy. Ah, we'll talk about it tomorrow. There's so much. There's so much we can learn from the art of war and just war in general and just evil and sin. So what do you do it's, instead of calling them out in this like lovey-dovey way? Okay, so let's say you have a hater, right? Let's say you have a copycat. Haley Baldwin, who you know I love, posted on her Instagram, like in the middle of the Selena drama. I was living for it. She posted, she reposted this tweet and it, it really resonated with me and I thought it was really smart, but also annoying. Well, it was, haters are confused admirers. They see something in you that they want for themselves, and they don't understand how to interpret it so it comes out as hate. I was like, that's interesting. And it's, that sort of like gets kind of to the heart of the whole imitation is flattery kind of thing. Cause it's like, I don't find it flattering. But when you look at it in those terms of like psychology, it's like they're confused and they, they're too inept, they're too stupid to be like, it would be smarter to get closer to this person in a positive way than try to tear them down. Cause if I tear them down, I don't learn anything. And if I tear them down, that doesn't make me better at all. I learned this lesson when I was about 23 years old and I first moved to New York City and I was like, I started a complete hater. I was like, she's so pretty and she's so tall and she's so rich and she's so thin and she's so successful. And I was like, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted feeling this way. And I realized it was actually less work to get close to these people who I like hated, learn from them, maybe in a parasitic way, who knows, than like, try to tear them down. Because like, I remember like there was this one girl I hated, we hated each other, I probably just hated her. And I was like, I'm gonna tear her down. And my friend's like, and what does that get you? What does that get you, Shallon? Okay, you've gone around this club talking shit about her all night. How, did you have fun? Did she, is she dead now? Like, what do you, come on. And I was like, oh no, that's right, that's right. So I learned to get closer to people I envy. And when I feel that like, like that, that jealous enviousness, that to me is a sign to move closer, not farther away. That person is doing something right. That person is doing something and I should lean into this feeling and lean through it. One phrase that makes me like fill with murderous rage is imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Go 
fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself, whoever wrote that. You know who wrote that probably? A man or like a like a frigid woman named like Meredith who never gave blowjobs and she tried to make every other spicy woman just shrink and minimize. Because what that sentence means to me is, shh, not only are you not allowed to be mad that someone is copying you and taking your intellectual property, whether it's your prom dress and the outfits that they're copying, whether it's your homework, whether it's your, your vibe online, whether it's your literal business model and the recipes that you're selling, whatever. Not only are you not allowed to be mad, <laughs> you should be happy about it. You should be like, oh my God, I'm like so flattered you ripped off the name of my company. I'm so flattered you bought the domain name Shallon Online and made it a fake site using my tips, but it's not my fucking website, Brad Barrett, you bald fuck. Shallon Online is not my, we it's not my website. He waited until like 12.01 the day it expired before my ex-husband could buy it, like recapture it, and he bought it and he made a fake site. I will find you and I will use your stupid bald head as like a pool cue or something. I'm still thinking, but it's gonna be bad. So like, we're not, we don't have to be happy that people are copying us because if there's one thing that I think really messes women up, it's the concept of denying how you're feeling. Shh, you shouldn't feel that way. I was with a therapist the other day and I was talking about something. She's like, but why are you letting it bother you? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay, so I'm not only upset and anxious about a situation, uh, now I feel stupid for being upset and anxious. And how is that productive? How is that how we solve anything? It isn't. That's what makes women crazy. That is societal gaslighting. And I don't subscribe to that shit. If someone's copying you, that makes me insane. I've never found it cute. So you know what you can do? You call people out who are copycats because copycats are, if nothing else, uncreative and they're lazy, you know? So they're not exactly like spoiling for a fight. They're trying to take the laziest, easiest route to enjoy the same success in some category that you have had. And the easiest way to knock them off is to point that out. And it's, it's way better to do this in front of people. Shame is our friend. Shame is a tool we can use against our enemies. And now in this digital life, we have more opportunities to publicly shame people than we ever have before. And sometimes when people come for you, you gotta use that. You gotta play that card. Not all the time. It's very important to pick your battles. Very important. Because if you don't, if you fight every single thing that comes against you, you're gonna look like the crazy one. And it's not gonna be wrong. Like you're gonna expend so much energy fighting off people who really can't unseat you they can't dim your shine. Like I was saying earlier about like body positivity. It's like, if, if a fat woman feels good about herself, how exactly does that affect me negatively? It does not. It's fine for all of us to be here. So even if someone is trying to imitate you, historically, imitators never thrive. They just don't. They just fail because they're inauthentic, because they don't have that organic, like, capability to keep something going so they burn out eventually it's like a phase and it means that they're so insecure they have to inhabit your personality instead of getting one of their own and that takes a lot of energy and people don't keep that up for too long so more often than not copycats and stuff they burn out but if you don't want to wait i get that it's evil week call them out be like oh kels did you dress as me for Halloween? Oh wait, no, it's not Halloween, but you are dressed as me. That's so cute. Although like, you know, I kind of did this six months ago. So way to, way to catch up, way to be a little late to the party. It's adorable though. I love having a fan. Start a fan account for me. Hashtag Shallon fan. You can call them out in a very public way and you can be kind of a bitch about it because you want them to feel like startled and upset and ashamed. But what if you have a hater? What if you have a hater who is jealous of what you have, they don't, I'm sorry, envious of what you have, they don't think you should have it. It's, it's tough, it's tough, truly, and you know I don't like to say this because you know I like war, truly the answer is to ignore them because then they exhaust themselves and they look so stupid trying to tear you down. And let's say they're going around school like talking shit about you or your office or something. Let's say they're doing this in proximity to a guy you like. That's actually a gift. Let me tell you why. When girls are mean to me 
in front of like a guy that I like, I'm like, thank you. You just, this is a layup because you know what guys want to do? You know what they're hardwired to, to do? Protect. So it is so easy for you to stoke that in them. I recently had someone who's basically like stalking me. <laughs> She's about to have a very bad week. But like it made Max like in Flint, he's already German. So they're like, you know, just ready for war, like constantly, you know, they're just like, can I invade Poland? How about Yugoslavia? Rah! And so I was like, <laughs> mm. and he was like, <gasps> like he just like puffed up like this war frog, just like, rah, like ready to protect. And like, so it's such, it's such an easy button to push on men. It is so, so easy. It's a fucking gift. So like if I'm out at a bar and a girl's bitchy to me, like even if they're not, you can like make this up if you're on a date. She's like, this girl was so mean to me in the bathroom. She said I look stupid in my outfit. Girls don't really say that, but like guys don't know that. And he'll be like, you don't look stupid. And he'll be like, I don't know. Really? You're, I mean, you're so smart. Like, do you think so? You gotta like put your chin down, look up through your lashes and through your bangs and be like, Mm -hmm. get your voice really high and silvery and soft it just, it just really hurt my feelings I don't know what to do mm. and they're gonna be like oh I got this I'll take care of you so if it's a girl who's after your man like she's so stupid Ugh. this is why like the side checks when we talked about that side check video with Kylie and whatever fucking name it she gets no more clout on this channel by the way guys like she, I make money on this. She, her life's on fire, whatever. So it's like when you, if you're a side chick and you come for like the wifey, you're only going to drive that man in the middle closer to the girlfriend. He's only going to puff up and want to protect the girl he has made a commitment to. And you're going to be seen as this crazy interloper, right? So if you're on the other side, if you're on the wifey side and some girl's coming for you and in between your man, <sighs> great. Again, layup layup. So look around in your life if you have a hater of any kind and think, hmm, who can I manipulate to get pity from? How can I use this to my advantage? Because we always talk about what do manipulative people, sociopaths want more than anything? It's not power. It's not revenge. It's pity. Studies have shown this. Pity is what they want. Because when you pity someone, I mean, you're very malleable. You ever call a guy in a wheelchair an asshole? Me neither, <laughs> you know? Like, you feel sorry for this person, you're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. You, you're late to work, you come up with a story, oh, it's just my car, and, blah, 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 and there was a rainstorm. You know, it's a, it's a theory to engender pity. So if someone's coming at you sideways, and if you feel like you're being victimized and bullied, look around and be like, who can I get pity from? My dad, will he put an extra $500 in my bank account? My friends, will they let me pick like the place we go to dinner on Friday? The boys I'm dating? There's something. Always look for the upside of a down because there is one. And usually it means you can manipulate, the, you can weaponize your feeling to get something from someone else. Okay, so back to haters. <clears throat> oh, this is like kind of the last point, which I like. Susan, Dr. Albers, you made a good point here. <clears throat> excuse me, which is if you can't think of a way to like weaponize their chirps against you. And if you can't think of a way to like crush them without doing damage to your reputation, because that truly is the number one thing you have to preserve your reputation. Because like I said, usually haters will just like kind of burn out. And it's true that if you have haters and again, a hater is someone you can complete that sentence. They're, they, they're envious of my blank because they want it for themselves. And again, if you can't like immediately think of what that might be, take a moment, sit with yourself and be like, do I need to do some refining with the way I live my life? Not all feedback is gonna feel good. Not all feedback is gonna come in this like warm, fuzzy, shallow package. I know I'm not very warm and fuzzy, I'm sorry. But like sometimes it comes in the form, like you get stronger after battle. You learn your weaknesses after a war, you know? And that sucks, but again, there's the silver lining to a painful, irritating situation. And maybe it isn't weaponizing it and getting pity and manipulation from someone else. Maybe it's learning and it's growth. And there's a reason it's called growing pains. Annoying, I know. So one of the last things she says is just ignore. 
Obviously, it's easier said than done, but here's a phrase she uses that I love. Ignore the booze. They often come from the cheap seats. Because what have we said before? No one who's chirping you is above you. No one. We talked about this in videos before. I have a whole playlist on frenemies and mean girls. If someone's coming for you, it's because you're doing something right. <laughs> Haters are confused admirers. All right, guys, join me tomorrow for wrath dropping on Halloween. And like I said, find me on Instagram at ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. Nope, that's not right. Wow, I just have this, okay. Find me on Instagram at ShallonXO to vote for the next video topic and head to my website, ShallonLesser.com to shop my merch and get connected. Just click get help. Stay savage.